Hello everyone, I welcome you back to my channel. In this video, we will be learning three theories of intelligence. The first will be two-factor theory of intelligence, second will be group-factor theory of intelligence, and the third will be Guilford structure of intellect model of intelligence, SOI or Guilford theory of intelligence. First of all, let us see what is intelligence. The definition of intelligence is very complex, yet in very simple term. Intelligence is defined as the ability to learn or profit from experience, the ability to solve problems or the ability to cope or adjust with changes and demands of the environment. According to Stern, 1914, intelligence is the general capacity of the individual to consciously adjust his thinking to new requirement. Coming to the first theory, that will be two-factor theory of intelligence. Two-factor theory was developed in 1905 by an English psychologist, Charles Spearman. The theory is based on factor analysis, which is a statistical procedure. Spearman used factor analysis to examine relationship between people's scores on different tests or subtests of intelligence. He concluded that people who do well on some intelligent tests also do well on other tests. Similarly, people who do poorly on some intelligent tests also tend to do poorly on other intelligent tests. On the basis of this research, Spearman concluded that intelligence consists of two factors, G factor and S factor. The G factor is the general ability or the common ability and the S factor stands for the specific ability. The difference between people in intelligence was a matter of how much G they possessed and Spearman called this general factor as mental energy. Coming to the characteristics of G and S factor, G factor 1, it is universal inborn ability. The greater the G in an individual lead to greater success in life. S factor 1, it is learned and acquired in the environment. G factor 2, it is constant in the sense that for any individual in respect of all the correlated abilities remains the same. S factor, it varies from activity to activity in the same individual. G factor 3, the amount of G differs from individual to individual. In S factor, the amount of S differ from individual to individual as well. Now let us look into Spearman two-factor theory of intelligence contributions. So it has made two major contributions in the psychology of intelligence. Firstly, Spearman developed the mathematical model for studying G, which laid the foundation of factor analysis. The logic and method of correlational analysis was afterward followed by other researchers for developing multifactorial theories of intelligence. The second major contribution is that it established scholarly tradition in the investigation of human abilities. Lastly, let us see the education implications of this theory. Firstly, the theory taught us that each individual differs from one another with varying degrees of abilities. Therefore, each child is unique and each one has their own capacity. The second is the theory gives a better insight to the teachers about the nature of intelligence. And the third education implication is the specific ability that is the S factor is acquired and learned from the environment and therefore students learning environment can be modified or made suitable by the teachers for effective learning. Coming to the second theory in this video is Group Factor Theory of Intelligence. So what is Group Factor Theory of Intelligence? Group Factor Theory of Intelligence is also known as Theory of Primary Mental Abilities, Factor Analysis Theory of Intelligence, or Thurston's Theory of Intelligence. In the year 1937, Louis Thurston came out with Group Factor Theory. According to him, intelligence neither consists of general mental abilities and specific factor as proposed by Spearman, nor 
multi-factors as developed by Thorndike, but a cluster of abilities. On the basis of factor analysis, he found that intelligence is comprised of six primary factors, each relatively independent of others. Now let us go through the six primary factors of intelligence according to Thurston's. 1. Number factor. Number factor is the ability to do numerical calculations rapidly and accurately. 2 is verbal comprehension factor, which is found in tests involving verbal comprehension, which may take two forms as in fluency and verbal comprehension. 3. Space factor. Space factor involved in any task in which the subject manipulates the imaginary object in space. Example, visualizing pieces of puzzles as how to fit them together. The fourth primary factor is memory factor. The memory factor involves the ability to memorize quickly and retain for a longer period of time. 5 is reasoning factor. Found in tasks that require a subject to discover a rule or principle involved in a series or group of letters. 6 is word fluency factor. It involves whenever the subject is asked to think of isolated words at a rapid rate. Based on these factors, Thurston constructed a new test of intelligence known as Test of Primary Mental Abilities, that is PMA. In conclusion to this theory, let us look at educational significance. 1. Thurston theory of intelligence was a major influence on later theories of multiple intelligence such as Guilford, Gardner, and Sternberg. 2. It contributed greatly to the measurement of attitudes. Thurston's scale, which was developed in the year 1928, was the first formal technique for measuring attitudes. Okay, so now let us go through a brief introduction of who Guilford was, since he is the man behind this theory of intelligence. So, Joy Paul Guilford is his full name. He was an American psychologist born in the year 1897. He was a psychology professor in the University of Nebraska and later in the year 1941, he joined U.S. Army. In U.S. Army, he was involved in developing tests to select candidates for training the pilots. He designed numerous tests and tools of which structure of intellect is one among the tools. After the Second World War, Guilford continued to work on the intelligent test, focusing particularly on divergent thinking and creativity. So now let us look into Guilford's structure of the intellect. Guilford applied factor analytic technique to isolate the various factors of thinking to separate out creativity and other skills from the factors measured by IQ. His structure of intellect model organized these various abilities along three dimensions, namely content, product, and process. He sought to develop tests for each combination of the possibilities on these three dimensions, expecting that a person could be high on some of these abilities while being low on the others. Coming to the three dimensions of intelligence or structure of intellect by Guilford, firstly we have here is content. So what is content? By content, different people seem to pay more attention to and they think more effectively about different kinds of information as comparatively to others. This kind of information can be visual, that is information presented to the eyes, auditory information presented to the ears, symbolic information perceived as symbols or signs that stand for something, example Arabic numerals, the letters of an alphabet or musical notations, etc. The fourth content information is semantic. Semantic are the verbal meanings often but they do not always associate with words. The fifth information is behavioral. Behavioral are the informations about the mental states and behavior of observed individuals. 
Hearing content let us remember that different people pay attention and think uniquely about different kinds of information. For example, an artist or musician may excel in processing auditory or symbolic content but may perform poorly in semantic or behavioral content. Coming to the second dimensions of intelligence or structure of intellect is product. So what is product? The product's dimension relates to the kinds of information we process from the content types. So the first information is units. What are units? Units refers to the abilities to perceive units in a content area. This might be a symbolic unit such as words, visual units such as shapes, or behavioral units such as facial expressions. The second information is classes. Classes refers to the ability to organize units into meaningful groups and to sort units into the right groups. The third unit information is relations. Relations is the ability to sense the relationships between pairs of units. And then we have systems. Systems consist of the relationship among more than two units, then come transformations. So transformations is the ability to understand changes in information such as rotation of visual figures or jogs and fonts in a semantic area. The implication. Implication refers to expectation. Given a certain set of information, one might expect certain other information to be true. The third dimension is operations. So what are operations? The operations dimension describe what the brain does and this type of information are cognition. Cognition is the ability to understand, comprehend, discover and become aware of information. The second is memory. Memory is the ability to store and retrieve various kinds of information when in need. The third operation information is divergent production. Divergent production is the ability to assess multiple solutions to a problem. The fourth is convergent production. Convergent production is the ability to arrive at one single solution to a problem. And the last is evaluation. Evaluation is the ability to judge the information critically, whether it is correct or incorrect, which items are identical in some ways, which items are better, or what qualities are shared by various items, etc. In conclusion, let us look into education implications. Number one. Guilford discovered many mental abilities which were unknown before. Second, intellect is a matter of skills and hence can be improvised through training. Third, we should keep into consideration the individual differences among students. Fourth, curriculum should be such that a combination of operation, content, and product is made for the development of intellect. So that is all for the theories of intelligence. Thank you so much for watching.